Okay, so I've had a viewer request asking me how I set up my radio with FT8 and Grid Tracker and my logging software. Um, now, in part one, I showed you a few settings on the Yaesu rigs on the FTDX 101 here. Very similar for the FTDX 10 and the 710. And um, in this video, we're going to go over the software configuration. And um, this will be a bit more generic, good for most. Uh, most radios so the first thing you need to do before you plug your radio into your computer is download the driver software whether that's ICOM whether that's Yaesu Kenwood there'll probably be USB drivers to install in your computer to uh, for the radio to work so first thing you want to do is go to the uh, yesu.com web page if you're running Yaesu and go on to products HF transceivers then you'll see along the uh, top here you've got a list of all of the radios so select the radio that you are using I'm using the FTDX 101D and go to files and then you need to look for the drivers for it which when I last checked were somewhere down the bottom here there you go you've got your uh, USB driver virtual COM port. So you want to download and install that. Now I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it, but if you download that and install it just like you would any other program, and then you can check that it's working. If you go to this little spy glass at the bottom left of your screen, you're going to type in device manager and you can see up the top here, go into that and it's brought it up on this second screen i'm running multiple screens here and there's two things to check so firstly go into your audio inputs and outputs you should have a line a usb audio codec so that is the audio from the radio into the computer there should also be one with speakers which is your uh, audio from the computer into the radio. Second thing to check is your ports down here. You should have a couple of COM ports added. So you're looking for these Silicon Labs dual CP2105 USB, etc., etc. There's two there. The one we're interested in is this one, the enhanced COM port, which in my case is COM port six. The next thing you need is a piece of software called OmniRig, and I will put links for all of these bits of software down below. But what OmniRig does is it acts as a server. So OmniRig talks to the radio, and all the other bits of software talk to OmniRig. The problem you've got here is if you've got multiple pieces of software trying to access the cat functions on the radio, they will all clash. So you've got uh, WSJTX trying to talk with the radio as well as your logging software. You'll, you'll run into problems. So OmniRig talks directly to the radio and then all the software talks to OmniRig. It acts as a server and uh, it just kind of works. So there's two versions of OmniRig. You've got uh, 2.1, which is not the version you want. That's uh, I tried that, it had problems with it. You want the original one at DX Atlas. And if you go down to uh, downloads page, and it's right down near the bottom. So you want OmniRig here. Every now and again, they update the software to include new radios as they get released. So see, this was last updated in 2021. You got INI files for OmniRig updated in 2025. So you want to download both of those, install OmniRig, and um, unzip that INI files for OmniRig, and you have to copy that file into uh, OmniRigs folder. So I'll show you that very quickly. So if you open up a, a file explorer, you're going to go into, um, let me find it. It'll be your C drive, uh, program files 86, uh, it's Afrit and OmniRig, and that file you've unzipped 
you need to copy into this rigs folder here. So just copy and paste it into there and that'll update it. And then you can open up OmniRig and set it up for your radio. So when my computer eventually catches up, it'll bring up a little box like this. So it's a very simple program. You can put two radios in there. So rig one, I've got the 101D and rig two, I've got my ICOM 705 set up. So just like any other CAT program, select your radio type. In my case, it's the 101D. If you remember before, when we checked the device manager, COM port six, and back to my last video, the board rate was 38.4 and all the rest can pretty much stay as default. So you're going to select that, click OK, then that'll happily run in the background and all the other software will talk to that. Okay, so you configured the radio, you got it plugged into the USB on your computer, you've got OmniRig up and running. Next thing is to make it work with your choice of logging software. Now I use Station Master 2, I'm not going to go into too much depth on this particular software because your logging software will be different depending on what you use. So uh, I'm just going to skirt over this, but go into your settings and uh, you got all the uh, usual stuff you have to set up, call sign, grid square, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, I also use QRZ. Now I have a paid subscription with QRZ. I think you have to have a paid subscription to make this work. Um, so I've entered my QRZ details in there. So Station Master logs my contacts and then forwards them on to QRZ. So I keep a QRZ log as well. Uh, you can set up your other logging software, LOTW, uh, EQSL if you want. Now, in order to make this work with um, WSJTX or Z, whichever version you use, I'll explain the difference in a minute. I've got my server port ADIF UDP server port set at 2333. And you'll see why that's important when we get into installing WSJTX. So make sure you've got your uh, port settings set up for port 2333. And your rig control. So I've set up the FTDX 101D, which is what I'm using. And radio connection options, you want to set the software to talk to OmniRig and then uh, save that. So that's your um, settings for your logging software. The next thing you need to do is get on Google and download WSJTX or WSJTZ. Now, without getting too much into the politics of this, the difference between them is WSJTX is the original version. It's a bit more manual, whereas WSJTZ, if you're wondering how people can set it running and just walk away and leave it, that's what they're using. Um, WSJTZ is a modified version. So entirely up to you which you download. They both uh, set up basically the same way. So this is for um, WSJTX. And you're going to find the downloads for it which are down the bottom here and you can set it up for whichever windows version or operating system you're using so just download that and install as normal uh, wsjtz again google is your friend and it's slightly different but there's your uh, download there now whilst you're at it back on google do a search for Grid Tracker 2. You're downloading this one here. So Grid Tracker Home. And uh, under Downloads and uh, Grid Tracker Downloads. And again, select the version of Windows you're using or Mac or Linux, whatever. And uh, install that just like any other software. Now, with all of these, your antivirus software might kick up a fuss saying it's a virus it's not you might just need to allow it under your antivirus software right now you've got wsjtx and uh, grid tracker downloaded your next step is to configure wsjtx i suggest doing this before grid tracker so we're going to go into your file 
and settings. And uh, again, um, usual uh, stuff to set up. So your call sign, your grid square, uh, whatever other preferences you have into radio. Remember we set up OmniRig, so everything's going to talk to OmniRig. So set that up to go via OmniRig. And uh, PTT method is cat, and uh, you can uh, test the cat there, and uh, the PTT as well. When it sorts itself out, it'll take a few seconds. There we go. And you can keep up the PTT as well. Um, audio, there's a bit of a got you with the FTDX 101 here. Because you've got two VFOs, you've got your main and your sub VFO. The main VFO puts out on the left audio channel and the sub VFO goes on the right audio channel. So you want to uh, select your audio inputs and outputs to be your radio, the USB audio codec. And you need to change this one in the drop down menu to whichever VFO you want to use. As I said, I'm using the uh, main VFO, which is on the left. If you've decided to use the sub VFO, you will need to set that to the right. And then the other thing we need to change is under reporting. So you need to make sure you have prompt me to log QSO selected. And there's a couple of things you need to change here. So you need to have uh, accept UDP requests and you need to select uh, the port the port number and um, the uh, address there as well. Now, I've got this set to 224.0.0.1. Now, what that will do is it will send it out over the Ethernet or Wi-Fi via my network. And if I've got Grid Tracker running on a, another laptop, which is connected to the same network, then it'll still work. If you select that to 124.0.0.1, then it'll only send that information locally on this computer. So you will need to run Grid Tracker and WSJTX on the same computer. Now, I found my computer was bogging down slightly trying to run all these bits of software. So I run a separate laptop with um, Grid Tracker on, which is why. I have that set to 224.0.0.1, so it sends it out over the network. And then set the uh, server port to 2334. And you'll see why in a minute, because that's the settings we're about to use in Grid Tracker. The second thing you need to enable is this uh, logged ADIF broadcast. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to send the uh, contact when it's when you complete a contact and log it, it's going to send it to your logging software. Now, that is running on the same computer as WSJTX. So I have that set to 127.0.0.1. And if you remember, when I set up Station Master, I set up port 2333. So you need to put the same port number in there as you put in your logging software. Okay, and final bit of software configuration in Grid Tracker. We're on home straight, folks. So in Grid Tracker, you'll find this little gear cog for the settings on the right-hand side. We're going to go into that. And starting off on general, this is the one you need to set up to make it talk to uh, WSJTX. So IP address, same as you set in WSJTX, 224.0.0.1, because I'm doing this over my network. If I was running this software on the same computer as WSJTX, I could do 127.0.0.1. Set that port as the same port we had in WSJTX. So in my case, 2334 and multitask. And you should see here, number of UDP messages receive time since it received the last message and that'll keep updating every time it receives something from WSJTX. And you can also see at the top right here, receive. A Couple of other settings. Uh, most of these are just custom settings, set them how you want. 
lookups. I'm using qrz.com, so I've put my QRZ details in there. Audio settings just, uh, for your audio alerts. Map settings. I didn't like the uh, default display. The um, path was a bit narrow, and I didn't like the colors either, so I've changed the colors and the path width slightly. Uh, that's, uh, again, your own preference. Uh, what else do we need? Logging. So uh, I can't remember what's set as default in this, but this is how I've set it. So if you want to uh, pause the video and uh, copy my settings, uh, so logs to WSJTX, uh, backup login grid tracker, uh, sends to PSK reporter, QRZ.com. Again, I've got a paid subscription, so I put my... Uh, details in there you can also set up log, uh, club log um eqsl if you use that logbook of the world etc etc so set that up as required audio alerts so uh, you can customize those custom alerts yeah okay and logbook uh qsl location authority so this is how a uh, grid tracker knows which uh countries or uh, which grid squares you've worked and uh, you can select where you want it to take that information from in my case i'm using qrz.com and that should be about it that should be all you need to get you running uh, you can have audio alerts on this i've turned that off because i found it exceptionally annoying but you can have audio alerts and uh that I believe is about it. You've got, um, you can select it to display logbook of the world or QRZ, uh, POTA spots if you want, if you're tracking that, etc. etc. So there you go, folks. Hopefully that's useful to someone and uh, hopefully that will uh, get you on the air with WSJTX, the FTDX 101, and um, Grid Tracker 2.